want to I want to preach this evening from the Gospel according to Matthew. And we find in Matthew chapter 6, we find two brief passages that we want to highlight for this evening. This, of course, is the season of Lent. The season of Lent began on Wednesday, uh, Ash Wednesday. And if I had to put a theme on this evening's uh, short meditation, I'd like to propose that we think about spiritual spring cleaning. Mm -hmm. Spiritual spring cleaning. Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 4, and then we'll pick it up at 16 going to 18. Let me read that to you. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Then we'll pick up at verse 16. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Spiritual spring cleaning. Mm -hmm. This season of Lent is an interesting time in the Christian calendar. I would argue that it's one of the most important uh, moments or seasons for us. For uh, Lent is a moment of preparation. It's literally 40 <coughs> weekdays, not counting Sundays, from Ash Wednesday to Easter. And this is a time where we are supposed to dedicate and commit ourselves to fasting, to self-denial, to Christian growth, to preparation for the Easter uh, celebration, uh, for conversion, uh, simplicity, for penitence. This is a time where we're supposed to get our house in order, our spiritual house in order. Now many would argue that Lent is a time where you give up something. And the scripture clearly says that it's not necessarily about giving up something for the sake of giving up something. It's that anything that inhibits you or, or detours you from your relationship with God, you should try to remove that. But not to remove that in a sense of showing people that you have good willpower. And so I love when I walk around and people are talking about they gave up beef for Lent or they gave up soda for Lent. And then you go to the restaurant with the person and they're lamenting that they really, really want to have a piece of beef. But because they gave it up, they can't have it. And the scripture essentially says, beware of practicing your righteousness before the people. Don't let people know. It's not important for them to know how much willpower you have or how strong you are. It's most important for you to make a commitment to God and use that time and space to draw yourself closer to God. And so in essence, you put aside things that become smaller gods to you, things that you can't necessarily see yourself doing without. And in those moments when you crave that thing or that situation or that space, that's a perfect opportunity for you to speak to God, to pray, to meditate, to have your time with God. When we think about spiritual spring cleaning, before you can clean, you must take inventory. You must think about all the things that you have, all your possessions, all your assets. What do you have in those spaces? What do you have in those places? And literally, you want to think about whether you should keep them, whether you should purge them, get rid of them, or whether you should give them away. And in that notion of thinking that through, the question really is, what do you have that, that detracts from where you need to be? What do you have in your life? What is operating your space and your time and your energy that is deflecting you from being where God wants you to be? 
Who are you spending your time, your energy with that deters you from spending your time and energy with God? Who are you essentially wasting time and energy with or on? Well. What possessions are you focusing so much on huh. that you're not able to spend that time with God? <laughs> and this is where our notion of self-denial and where our notion of practicing Lent is. Well. It's not about giving anything up. It's about replacing those things that have come to replace your time with God. And so when we think about what the 4th century fathers of, of Christianity were talking about when they developed this sense of Lent, it was a notion that before you were baptized in the Christian church back then, you had to go through a season of preparation. Mm -hmm. And Lent was your season of preparation. Yeah. Ash Wednesday was a day where we uh, asked forgiveness for our sins and we publicly confessed God will sin, and that's Ash Wednesday. And then from Ash Wednesday to Easter was a time of preparation, a time of consecration, a time of renewal. Mm -hmm. So that when we get to Easter, and oftentimes Easter was a time when you were baptized, you were reborn. Mm -hmm. And so that 40 days leading up to that was this time of cleansing, times of preparation. So in our spiritual spring cleaning right now, what windows do we need to wash? Uh -huh. What carpets do we need to sweep or shampoo? Mm -hmm. Do we need to pull from under our beds all those things that we tucked under? Mm -hmm. Do we need to pull from our closet all the things that we hung up? Do we have clothes that are unnecessary? Mm -hmm. Not that we don't need, but are unnecessary. Mm -hmm. And what are we doing in our own spiritual life? Are we praying enough? Are we fasting enough? Are we spending enough time in prayer and meditation? Are we spending enough time inspiring and challenging and encouraging one another? Mm -hmm. Are we spending enough time being honest yeah. with ourselves, mm -hmm. with one another? Mm -hmm. What are we doing? Mm -hmm. In this notion of spiritual cleansing, I want to challenge each of us to not be like the hypocrites, like Jesus said. Don't do it just for show. <laughs> Matter of fact, if you do it, it should be so seamless and fluid that most people have no idea what you just did. And the essence should be that in our notion of spring clean, we should be able to commune even more with God. And in doing so, we should be able to spend more time with our loved ones. Yes. Spiritual spring clean. Mm -hmm. I want to challenge you to think about it and put it into effect. Mm -hmm. Today is Friday. We're in day three of the spring cleaning season. Mm -hmm. I want to challenge you to take the next 37 days and get your spiritual houses in order so that when we come to the celebration of Easter, we literally, figuratively, individually, and collectively have something huge to celebrate. Yes. Spiritual spring clean.